for the three speakers today, I have been copying the questions out of the chat box. And um, so I've got them kind of broken down um, so by speaker. So um, I think we'll just go ahead and uh, um, move into those questions now. Um, the first one was, um, that just came in was, what are the yearly maintenance costs on the systems discussed today? So start with Sasha and work our way backwards. Yeah. Okay, that's a, that's a very good question. So in terms of, in terms of OPEX, uh, it's going to be a very, uh, very case specific. The main one being uh, ammonia, ammonium sulfate production, you're going to need, you're going to need a source of sulfuric acid. And I mean, OPEX can range, but uh, for example, on that $210,000 system, about $100,000 to $150,000 of it might go to operating expenses. And then in, in terms of maintenance, it's a fairly robust system that maintenance costs are going to be reduced. It's pretty low. It's, it's really just that, that uh, sulfuric acid cost. That's the main driver. You want to address uh, uh, Brian? You want to address? Well, yearly maintenance costs. Well, when you look at the maintenance costs and also the operating costs, it runs right around nine hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, okay. And Kurt, um, anything you would like to share with regard to uh, maintenance costs on systems you referred uh, to in New York? Well, I think, uh, I, would, um, well, I think the thing I would say is that um, how we to to get. Uh, there's solid maintenance costs for different methods of, of, um, of capturing and taking uh, these nutrients. Um, it takes some time to do because we have not that many systems out there working and not many independent okay. evaluations going on. Uh, another question for Brian. Okay. Um, uh, another question for Brian. Um, a question came in about given the high concentration of P205 in the, your product, Thousand gallons uh, would supply about two years worth of P two hundred five. How do you apply the manure product at a low rate? That was on the liquid fraction of the product that came out of the the dye uh, the dye the uh, lagoon that came through that screw press. You, we apply that utilizing a real real low uh, squeeze pumps type system like a sprayer. A sprayer. Okay. okay. It works, it works pretty good that way. And also the other side of the coin is you can go and over, you're allowed in Missouri to over apply with an, on your N level and will increase your P level, but that means you can't come back to that field for, for a few, you know, uh, three years on average. Our, our soil, soil phosphorus levels are extremely low here. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, another question for Brian. Um, has anyone had any experience storing chicken litter in an ag bag? Not to, my, not to my knowledge, but I saw those questions in the chat box and it made me think, and I was like, why not? Because our product's coming in around 32% total solids. Okay. We stored it in the bag for several, uh, like I said, a year and a half. Came out around 32% total solids because it's totally closed, closed up. Okay. I think it's a great idea because at the same time, uh, I've seen piles of chicken litter uh, stored around the countryside and wonder how come um, ch um, chickens are given this pass and we, we four-leggers aren't to store our manure in a pile out there. So, Okay, last question for you, Brian. What is your thoughts on the process and PEDV situation? I'm not sure the, ac the acronym. The, por the porcine... The porcine uh, or poultry disease? Epidemic diarrheal virus, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, poor sign. It's a, uh, the, pro the process as we're using it right now, and if, if anybody knows anything about PDV, it's, it's extremely, extremely devastating to uh, um, small, pig small pigs. It's a, almost 100% uh, uh, destruct, uh, you know, mortality level. Um, that's from, that's from experience. And we have, we haven't measured the PEDV virus in that manure. Most of the manure has gone through a digester. We're looking at it as, as not to be an impact. The fields that we apply on are away from any other sow farms or any other uh, farm 
one that raises uh, hogs. So it's, pretty, it's pretty captive system, so what's generated there will probably stay generated there. As far as the destruction system, that has yet to be measured. Okay. Okay. Uh, a, couple uh, a couple questions for Kurt. Um, are, uh, is there any consideration to composting manure and then letting cows sit on the compost? There's, well, there's, well, there's, there. That is a technology uh, that's used out there by some dairy farms in cases, but not, for the but not for the point of the topic of, the topic of sequestering, uh, separating, uh, separating nutrients. Uh, uh, okay, here in okay, here in Washington, um, composted manure solids are a very common source of, uh, of bedding. So here in the Northwest, we do see quite a bit of it. Um, and then uh, one more question for you, Kurt. How feasible is it to dehydrate the manure and to use the manure in a dry form for fertilizing crops? Uh, it, would a uh, it would require a lot of energy to dehydrate manure to the point where it's 100% dry matter. 100% dry matter. So, uh, so the cost of, that, cost of doing that would probably be prohibitive. Okay. And also the nitrogen would be driven off when it's that's done. So most of the most of the, all the ammonia nitrogen would be gone, and probably some of the organic nitrogen would turn to ammonia nitrogen during the drying process. So the nitrogen would the nitrogen would not be as valuable as treated otherwise. Treated otherwise. Okay, and then the last question I think we're going to take for today, due to time, is um, it came in during your talk, uh, Kurt, was how feasible is drip irrigation of manure nutrients? Are the solids in the manure a problem with drip irrigation? Uh, the solids. Uh, the solids definitely would be in the dairy manure. The dairy, the solids would definitely be a problem in drip irrigation. Processing, um, manure, processing the manure to uh, remove the critical solids uh, to a point where it wouldn't clog up the nozzles could be done. Is it done? Not readily. Okay. No. Okay. Well, those are the, well, those are the questions I think we're going to handle today. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, joining us today. Appreciate you answering the polling questions and. We invite you back next month, February 21st, for our gasification technologies uh, web webcast at that time. Thanks from all the speakers today, and um, we'll see you next month.